the first letter of John describes God as pure love. And everyone, he says, who loves one another, they are born of God. Because love, he says, is born of God. So love flows from God. Jesus is the true face of this loving image of God. Not because we loved him first, not because we were good to love him, but he has loved us. And not just loved us, he sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice. So this love is self-giving love. This love is sacrificing love, which doesn't see to one's own benefit. Practical example is given in the gospel. When Jesus and his disciples are about to get into another place, people hurry there ahead of them and be there at that place, not because they knew that Jesus is going to perform a miracle and multiply the breads and provide them food, but they were there to listen to him. They came to hear Jesus, to hear his teaching and all that he was preaching and proclaiming. And when the day is almost over, the disciples get to Jesus and ask him to send people away so that they can eat and maybe come back or go home. But Jesus says, you provide them something to eat. The disciples are not getting it right at this moment. What Jesus is going to do? Or they are not fully aware of this heart of Jesus. They'll get this true love only when they are being martyred. They are getting the real feel of who Jesus is when they had to die for this Jesus, sacrificing their own lives. At this place, for them, it's like any other worldly situation. But for Jesus, it's something beyond. Jesus feels pity for this crowd. He has compassion for this crowd because they have been with him and he doesn't want to send them away to satisfy this physical hunger. As much as Jesus has satisfied their spiritual hunger, he wants to satisfy the physical as well. So it's another example for us that God is interested not just to provide us what is spiritual. God can take care of all our needs as long as our heart has the right preferences. Now these people, this crowd came there and a multitude of crowd. It is said those who had eaten the loaves numbered 5,000 men. So it was a crowd of thousands and the disciples did not want it to take the risk. But Jesus feels pity no matter how big is the crowd. He wants to satisfy their physical hunger as well. So God feeds us both spiritually as well as physically. He will get this physical need fulfilled maybe directly through some intervention through some reaching out of some earthly angels or in some other manner. I would not be able to grasp God's ways. But somehow God gets it done and he provides to all our needs. He is there to reach out, to satisfy our need, not necessarily our greed. At times human hunger, human longing will go beyond the needs. And even if the world is suffering today, it's because of the greed of some that the need is being sacrificed. Let us pray that we may have the right disposition of our hearts, that we may have the right priorities in our lives and live out this love, which at times the world has forgotten to understand the true meaning of love, the love which is outgoing, the love which is sacrificing, the love which doesn't see to one's own fulfillment and one's own safety, but the love which is showed to us by Christ, 
the love which is showed to us by these disciples later on. Let us try to live out this love with one another.